Get ready for the Leader Chat Room with Paul Kramer, featuring Lifestyle Elite Global Marketing Directors. Good morning, Lifestylers. Paul Kramer coming to you live from the Leader Chat Room at Lifestyle's home office here in beautiful and sunny Toronto, Canada. Great morning, great to have everybody with me today. Got an absolutely amazing guest here in the Leader Chat Room today. Before I introduce her to you though, I would like to thank our previous guest here in the chat room, GMD Riza Reglos. Uh, Riza, thanks for joining us. It was really, really great to get to know you better and your story. Uh, it was very inspiring, everybody really loved that. So thank you to GMD Riza. Riza, now, let's welcome into the Leader Chat Room our guest. Let me tell you about her. She joined Lifestyles in June of 2017. She was promoted to International Marketing Director October 2019 and promoted to Global Marketing Director in November of 2020. She's our 2018 Consistency and Productivity Award winner and also the winner of the 2019 Rising Star Award. So, without further ado, let's welcome from Cebu City, Global Marketing Director, Susan Shabian. Susan, good morning. Good morning, Sir Paul. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Great to be with you. You look fabulous. You've got a great setup there. Are you ready to tell everybody about your amazing story? Yes, I am all ready, Sir Paul. And I'm at the beautiful place here, Asset Builders Cafe. Ah, very, <laughs> very, very nice. Very, very nice. So let's get into it. You've got a great story. It's, uh, it's kind of a crazy story, but we're going to get into all the great details. Um, let's start out when you were just a kid. We've got a great little picture here. We've got the arrow pointed right at your head, <laughs> so you can't miss you. Here you are. You're the youngest child of three, right? Three kids. There they are. One, two, three. You were born in a very, very small village in the northern tip of Cebu. I can't even pronounce the place, so I'll let you do that. Uh, your father was a fisherman and your mom sold fish products. Um, your family was very, very poor when you were a kid and your self-esteem was very low as a, as a student, as a young person. So tell us a little bit about what your childhood was like. Um, yes, uh, in that picture, Sir Paul, um, I think I was like five or six years old. Um, growing up, um, I know we were poor, but it's okay for me that time was okay because um, my parents made sure that we really have food to eat. And then, but at a very young age, I, I started already helping my parents. Um, we dried fish, we fermented fish, and then we sell fish everywhere. Right. And we take them here in the city. Right, right. Now, yeah. on one of those occasions, I think you were walking somewhere and you, you fell off a bridge and you almost drowned. You had a near-death experience. What happened in that, on that time? Um, actually, Sir Paul, I did not remember when that happened, but it was my mom who, re, who reminded me. And it was amazing because um, later, my, in later years of my, uh, my life, like I think after I got married, I went to this uh, hospital in our town and my name was, was still there. <laughs> and yeah, I, um, I was, I know, and it was, I was lucky enough you know, that someone passed by and uh, found me or saw me. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So you were Thank you, Lord. Yeah, you were in a river, you had fallen in, you basically were drowning and you know, you were very close to dying and somebody by some miracle came by and picked you up out of that water. Is that is that what really happened? Yes, sir Paul. Yeah, yes, yeah. Paul. Yeah, yeah. Um because I uh, my, my mom told me that I used to uh, meet her at the, by the bus stop because my mom always like sell fish anywhere mm -hmm. and then I, I, I go to the bus stop to meet her yes, that's yes. what happened wow, wow, wow. well so you're in high school your parents um, you know their fishing livelihood took a real turn down because of illegal fishing practices of, of other other uh, fishermen and you know your parents wanted you to go to one of their relatives and ask to borrow money now this is an important thing in your life because it sort of impacted your attitude about money and things like that. So tell us what happened and what the answer you got was from your relative. 
Um, that 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 day, Sir Paul. Um, my God, no, I, I can't. Um, that was like a big time turning point for me because, okay, the um the weather was bad. So one day, my mom asked me to go and borrow some money to buy um food. Mm -hmm. No, so I I think I had to walk like a kilometer. No, I really had to pass um a cemetery. I remember. And then I went to um, ask my mom sent me here to ask um, to borrow money, and then I was turned down. Mm. And then I walked all the way and I was crying. And since then I said that I don't, no more, no more borrowing money. I I I I will do whatever it takes. That's why, um, and I, I don't want this to happen again. So I remember. Next time, when the weather was bad, I had to sell um, sands and wrap bills just to buy food because I don't want to borrow money again. Right. I will do whatever it takes. Right, right, right. Very important, very important moment in your life as such a young person. Um, but the one thing about your mom, though, is she was, uh, she understood the value of an education. She wanted you to go to school, right? So we've got a great picture here of you. Uh, here you are graduating. <laughs> Look at this with your mom, graduating from high school. Graduating from high school, and um, you were you were dancer of the year in high school. This is a theme in your life coming up here. And um, you went to college. Your mom believed in education, as I said. You went to college, and she wanted you to become a teacher. Tell us what happened. You know, when you graduated from college, you went to Manila. Um, for work experience, tell us about that part of your life. Um, yeah, my my mom and dad um, uh, kept telling us that we don't have anything. No, we don't have anything to be left to you guys, to to you, our kids. No, when we're gone, when we're when we passed away, so you really have to study. And that time, the only course that they can afford is um, being a teacher, education. Right. So even if I didn't really like it, Sir Paul, but I really had to, to finish it because I believe my parents and it was a struggle. So I graduated, yeah, as they expected, four year in college. And um after graduation po, um I had to I had to work already after, right after graduation because I cannot you know, I cannot rely from them. So um I did not pass the board exam. I didn't have I can't even afford to uh to pay for the review or anything all i had all i had in my mind was just to work because i of course no i had i have my things to uh, in my own to to buy or to live by right. and i i have i had to give my mom and my dad too money yes 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 so you went to and, work right you're in manila <clears throat> you're working at these different jobs and <clears throat> excuse me a, a relative of yours a distant relative tried to introduce you and set you up with a, a Canadian guy. So here's here's the problem, folks. Cana Canadian guy, never trust the, don't trust these Canadian guys. So this is a Canadian guy, his name is Tim. We have one of those here, by the way. <laughs> so so um, tell us a story about Tim. What, what was that whole situation, right? <laughs> oh my God, this was so funny. Uh, my, my cousin, uh, uh, a distant relative, um, this guy Tim, his name was Tim, but he told me that his his name was John. <laughs> he didn't know this guy. That's the first problem. I know. There's the first problem. And then <laughs> that's the first problem. And then he told me that this um, new supervisor um, looking for a lady, uh -huh. and I was like, no, I don't want a foreigner. Yes. I, I, I don't want a foreigner because maybe the foreigner will will buy insurance and just kill us. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's... That was my mindset, Sir Paul. That was funny looking back. But then he was so persistent, my cousin, and uh, make the long story short, I was like, okay, I'll just write my, i just write, and then my, my, my picture put in there, and then I just let it go, and I was like, don't give it to him, and I... He must uh, give it to him, and yeah, the following I think weeks or few a uh, few weeks after, I received a phone call <laughs> from from John or from Tim. Which which one called you? <laughs> <laughs> no, at first a, 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 a Filipino guy and called on the on the landline and was like, "Hey, um, can I meet you? Um, 
uh, Tim, this Canadian guy wants me to meet you. And I was like, who's Tim? I said, the John that you were, <laughs> that you thought. So, kala mo si John. I have to meet you. He told me. And so we met and then I really don't want Sir Paul to oh, no. And then I don't know, the big man is a blessing to me. And he was really persistent, no? And, and he came to the Philippines. Right, right, right. Well, here's what happened, okay, folks? So this is what happens. Um, Susan met this Canadian guy named Tim or John. We're not quite sure yet. But anyway, let's see this picture. Okay, well, here's what ended up happening. Here he is, Tim. And this is your wedding picture. Yes. So, t so tell us what Tim is like after you got to know him. Tell us a little bit about this handsome Canadian guy. <laughs> oh, I'm so proud of him. Um, he, he works in the oil industry uh -huh. and very, very generous. Even before I met him, he starts sending money. He starts sending um, sets of jewelry. Right. Yeah, and flowers and, and, and bouquet, uh, flowers, uh, bouquet of flowers and, uh, and chocolate. Right. It was very, very nice, Sir Paul. What a decent man. Yeah. I love him. Well, I'm glad, I'm, glad, I'm glad you do. He seems like a really, really nice guy for sure. And you seem really happy together. Now, this is the funny part, and I'm trying to figure this part out of, of your story, Susan, is that, you know, most uh, people, before they get married, they, they do partying, they, they, you know, they have a great time, they're single, they do all of this stuff, right? So you kind of did it the opposite way. So you got married, and I want to know about this because we, you, you then sort of became this party girl, right? And quote unquote party girl. Yeah. And we have some pictures here of you in your party mode. Okay, so these are these are going to be kind of funny pictures, folks. But uh, these, this is Susan in party mode. Um, tell us a little bit now, in, in in a serious way, in a little bit of a serious way. But tell us what was going through your mind in this part of your life, right? You'd met Tim, you guys I think were married, you were in Mexico, you came back to the Philippines, you even opened a bar together. What what was going through your mind and why were you in this party mode at this point in your life? Okay, um, okay. Uh, we got married here in the Philippines, Sir Paul, like 2004, and then 11 months later, uh, we got married in Mexico. Right. So we moved there in Mexico. But then uh, Tim always go to work, and then me, one time I got, you know, like, oh, I'm so bored. I want to go back to the Philippines. I'm going nuts here. And Tim said, hey, why don't you go to a bar? I mean, there's a neighborhood pub. He, he's, he's a friend of ours. So you meet people there. I was like, okay. So then that's <laughs> sure. the start. I go there like every day, Sir Paul, like every day. I go to the bar like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Right. Yeah. <laughs> And then, and then, I even volunteered to to be a bartender. Right. Don't pay me, Larry. His name was Larry. <laughs> Don't pay me, Larry. I just bartend here, and I just yeah, you can pay me drinks or something like that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, so you were just you know, Tim was probably working maybe on on the oil rigs or whatever, and you were you know just wanting to meet people, and you're a very social person, right? Is that basically the way it went down, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that's cool. That's, yeah. cool. that's good. So eventually, though, you know, the partying had to slow down eventually, um, and you developed some health issues. Tell us a little bit about some of the health issues, because that, that's going to lead us into the talk, you know, with Intra and how you, how you got to be introduced to the product. But tell us about what was happening with your health at that time. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, we opened our own bar. And I get into the party like big time, no? Like my God, really, like every night. And then <clears throat> my 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 health uh, start to um, I start to ano nag 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 low na immune system ko. My dad, by the way, diagnosed of having psoriasis, and that's that's what I had, Sir Paul. Right. And then um, nag allergy na ako, no? I was I was allergic to dust mite. Mm -hmm. Grabe na, grabe talaga. So, um, another thing also was, um, I was like, I told him, like, you know, it's about time. I want to go back to the Philippines mm -hmm. because I, um, yeah. Right. It was a wake up call for me. Yeah, yeah. You're right. I have you're to right. slow down. 100%. It was a wake up call for you. You listened to it, which is great. 
Um, and this is where you know we lead up to intro. But folks, you know we, we've learned a lot about Susan. There's no doubt about it. But there's more to learn. And in order to do that, it's time for us to play fast talk. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen it's, it's time, time for fast talk. It's time for fast talk with PK. PK. All right, GMD Susan, you know how to play this game, right? Yes, yes, sir, Paul. Okay, so we got a case of entry here, nine bottles. The first thing we need you to do is pick a number from one to nine. Then I'm going to ask you a question, random question that comes up, and you got to give the first thing that comes to your mind. All right, what's, what's the first number? Number six. Number six. Okay, here's the question for you. Oh, your closest friends call you Pepsi. Why? Oh, my actually sir Paul, since I can remember that is my name. My mom calls me Pepsi and the rest of the family. My mom was pregnant when she was pregnant of me, she was craving for Pepsi. <laughs> and I had a birthmark. Craving of, for cra Yeah, and I had a birthmark of Pepsi. Right up, oh, up here my in my gosh. upper lip. Yeah. <laughs> when I was a kid when I was a kid, I thought it, people were bullying me. But then later in my life, I was yes. kind of like, ah, this is cool. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is cool. Good for you. That's fabulous. That's fabulous. Okay, pick another number. Number three. Number three. Okay, here's what we've got. All right. What would you rather do, party or STP? Uh, I love STP. And can I go party <laughs> after? <laughs> <laughs> okay, absolutely. That's uh, absolutely you can. As long as you do those STPs, you can party all you want, no problem. Okay, fabulous answer. All right, one more. Um, number seven. Number seven. Okay, here we go. Complete the following sentence: A dog is a man's best friend because because he's loyal. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, very good. There's a message for Tim there. There's a message for Tim there somewhere. Okay. <laughs> All right, Susan, thank you so much for playing Fast Talk. Thank you, thank you, sir. All fun. right, we're back now, right? So now you you sort of, this point in your life, you were starting to slow down, you got the, the message, you had some psoriasis happening, which became quite serious, and a priest led you to GMD Blanca. And <clears throat> tell us what happened with um, your experience with the product and also your mom's experience with the product. <clears throat> yeah, this is how I met Lifestyle Sir Paul. Um, one day, um, this first friend of mine calls me and said, um, can we help this lady? Her name is Blanca because um, for, for her op operation, I said, yeah, it's okay. So then um, I was waiting, no, I was waiting and then no calls again after a, a month. So I called the, I, I called them. I said, "Hey, what happened?" Right. You know, and they said, and and she said, "Oh, I no longer need um operation." I said, "What?" So then I said, "Come and visit my house right. because I want to try that one because that time, Sir Paul, I've I've been too many doctors already, um, shot, you no, know, uh, uh, synthetic meds and all. Like I've I, I've I've done so much already to my body and nothing right, right. So. They came to my house, they do STP, they did the yep. STP. But then my my husband Tim was like, Ah, oh, you got scammed again. <laughs> oh, Tim, Tim, Tim. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He said that I got scammed because many times, you know, you you name it Ed, you name it. I I, I mm -hmm. buy, you no, know, I buy anyone who comes right. to my house right. and yep. their um supplements. Yes. Yeah, I tried everything. So then I said, I for the last time, no, I, I was, I, I'll be scam, it's okay. So I, I, I really did buy the products at 20% mm -hmm. that time. And then my mom, my mom that time, she was suffering already, you know, uh, for the longest time. She was a diabetic. So she started already like uh, having a skin yes. rash. So then I, I gave it to her. And because that time we really had to go to Canada for three weeks uh, vacation. So I brought some with me and I left some for my mom. And then I came home and my mom was like, hey, what is that stuff that you gave me? Look at me, I, had no, I have no more rashes. And I slept mm -hmm. good. 
I felt good. I said, yeah, mom, me too. Like, I mean, awesome. This is really mm -hmm. good. No? So I remember, I remember um, Eleanor Abing, no? Or uh, Jem de Blanca, they keep inviting me, Sir yes. Paul, to attend yeah. Hope. And I kept turning them down. I was like, no, no, no business for me. I'm done with business. No. But in that time, I was like, oh, okay, I will just attend just to get the 40%. Right. right. So I attended the Hope. And then what the, I said, oh, okay, I'll just get the express package. And I don't know. And then they told me that, hey, we're going to, we want to go to your barangay, to your small village, and let's share that product. I said, oh, okay, mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. problem. So that was the yeah, start. So, yeah. Paul. so you saw the big picture. You went to an RLT, and you, you really did sort of see what the business was all about. Um, you know, and then, and then, you know, you started to climb the ladder of success. You, 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 you had your package. You started working. You worked hard. And one of the things, we have a great picture here, one of the things you wanted to do is you wanted to qualify for the Vietnam incentive, and that really motivated you, right? Um, and also, in 2018, that same year that you won the Vietnam incentive, you won the Consistency and Productivity Award. How were you feeling and how excited were you about the business? Oh my God, no. Um... Um, I started, yeah, when I started attending RLT the first time, Sir Paul, I, that was the start was like, oh my God, if these people can do it. Like, I think I remember it was Jim Dijun Igut. I was like, oh my God, if this tricycle driver can do it. And so can I, no? So that was the start that I keep going to RLT and I will not, I ne no more absent anymore. And then there was the incentive for the Vietnam. I was like, I really have to uh, get this international travel. So yeah, I got, uh, I was very consistent, 86 KLPL. Right. So that's how I get, um, that, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah travel. that's how you got to Vietnam, right? Um, and you kept working, you kept working, you became an NMD, um, and, but your journey to from NMD to IMD was tough, right? It was, it was very difficult. Um, you, you even experienced some depression there. Um, as you were doing this, I want you to tell us about that. But you, and I've got a great picture here too. I want to show everybody. Here's a picture of you and your mom. You won, you won the Rising Star Award in 2019. You know, one of the things that's important to you is you wanted your mom to see you succeed, right? And so tell everybody about, you know, why you were feeling low when you were running for IMD and how important this, this picture is with your mom. Okay, um, I was depressed uh, running for my IMD ship, Sir Paul, because the two legs uh, that got me for my NMD promotion, they, they, uh, they face challenges and they slow down. So I had to build another four new legs for my IMD promotion. So um, I caught myself in the morning when I wake up crying. My, 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 my eyes were swollen and my husband was like, what happened to you? I was like, my God, what did I do wrong? I'm like this. And, and then my, I thank God because my husband is always there, Sir Paul, and then lifting me up. And I was like, you know what? Um, just keep going. I know you can do it. And you know, there's going to be lemons there. But then just keep going. I know you. I know. I know your attitude. I know that you will get to that ladder of uh, top ladder mm -hmm. there, and so that's that's. Uh, I I was like, okay, then I I re, I, I build four new legs for my um, IMD wow. promotion. Wow. <clears throat> I mean, that's impressive because yeah, you, that's Lord. fabulous. I mean, that's fabulous. Um, you know, you nothing did stop you. Nothing did stop you. You rebuilt those legs, then you set your sights on GMD, right? And um, you know, you even got COVID, right? You had COVID during this time. You you were another one of our COVID GMDs. It's absolutely amazing. You tried to run twice for GMD. Um, we've got a picture here of you when you achieved your global marketing director. Absolutely fantastic. This occurred in uh, 2020, of course, right? So tell us, um, you know, wh how, did, how did you feel when you accomplished this, number one? And, and how difficult was it to get there? Because it's not easy. I mean, not, it's not easy to become GMD, right? Yes. 
Um, yes, it was not that easy, um, Sir Paul, especially during the pandemic time. So, yeah, I really had to uh, thank God because we got all these um, certificates no, that were able to go on the yeah, border. Yes, yes. And what I did, Sir Paul, yeah, um, thank God because uh, my, my legs, no, the other two legs, they start coming back. And then the four, uh, the four legs, and it was just perfect, uh, perfect time for everything. I think, and then with the product, Sir Paul, I I, I had to send it to the big trucks, no, to the to our province, and um, yeah, it was it was it was it was fulfilling. Right after the the run, uh, Sir Paul, I know I ran mm -hmm. twice. No, it was October, and I didn't I didn't hit it, and then the next month, and after that, it was like I I, I cried <laughs> because I felt like oh my God after everything lahat po ng mga like yung um struggle no and then here i am i i made it i made it thank you lord yeah. thank you because of my because of my of my um uh, mentors my upline mentors no jen de eva and the eleanor jen de blanca and of course my team sir paul um they're they're there, and I'm so proud yeah. of them. No, you've got a great team. You got, yeah, you've got yeah. a great team. You've got great upline mentors, um, of course, with GMD, you know, Blanca and Eva being there to support you. Um, it's amazing. And, you know, your parents are important to you. Your, your big why is your family, but especially your parents. And you were able to do something for your mom that I think is really amazing. We've got a great picture here of his 70th birthday uh, bash that you threw for your mom. Uh, looks absolutely lovely. Um, tell us a little bit about how important your, your mom is to you, your parents, and you know how that drives you or drove you to to be successful with lifestyles. Oh um, my God, um, Sir Paul, my parents are my everything. Um, that giving my mom a 70th birthday for me um, as an accomplishment because I almost lost my mom um, way back. I think I was in high school. Uh, my mom almost committed suicide. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And um, because my, my elder brother, um, he got someone pregnant, and my mom's uh, kind of like wor world collapsed, you know, because she was expecting so much from my brother that my brother can help us, me and my other brother. And then I told my mom, my mom, you don't lose hope. I'm still here. You never know. You just never know what my future would be. And I promise I will give you a good life, mom. You and my dad. So they're my big wives, Sir Paul. So when, that's why um, my, the happiest person now for me is my right. mom. Way more than me. I am, I am happy. Of course I'm happy. But my mom is the happiest, even up until now, Sir Paul. She is my GMB. Right, right. And I will do everything for her. And during that birthday, Sir Paul, I, I, I had to do that because um, I know she will appreciate it. And because she, she, has, she never had a birthday bash in her life. All her life, Sir Paul was just working, working, working and feed us. And thank you, Lifestyles. Thank you, Lord. Well, it's a fabulous, yeah. <laughs> Able to do yeah, that. It's a fabulous thing to be able to do. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it's a, it's a, it's amazing. It's a wonderful thing for you to do. I'm sure she really appreciates it. And um, but, you know, you're living you're living the GMD lifestyle. You have income from lifestyles exclusively. We've got great pictures here of your cars, your travels, properties. When you think about what you've accomplished, and you know how you can look after your parents and and um the life that you have now what do you think when you see all of this stuff like all of this brought on you deserve all of it from the lifestyles opportunity what do you think of all of that oh i could not believe uh, sir paul just like today on our way uh, my, my husband and i today were on our way to a grocery store looking back because i I always look back, Sir Paul, that's why I'm always grateful every day. With all these accomplishments, I could never imagine myself being so independent now. And I'm so proud because, and even my husband is so proud of me because 
I'm I I I'm financially independent. I no longer ask money from him. <laughs> and I know he's he's so generous with Paul, like I'm one of the I'm one of the luckiest lady. <laughs> And I do not, uh, I do not um, abuse it uh, from him. And me, that's why he said I, he keeps bragging about me <laughs> that I'm, you know, I'm so independent now. Thank you, life size, because I could not believe that I can, I can be like this. I can be empowered. I can be uh, a person that I, I, I could, I, you could imagine. I could not imagine right. to be. Totally different. Well, let's talk about that a little bit. Let's talk about your personal development because, you know, it's great to have the money and everything. And, and Tim, Tim better be careful because <clears throat> he may be coming to you to borrow money someday if he's not careful. <laughs> I, let me know when that happens, okay? I want to find out when that happens. <laughs> but on, on your, yes. with your personal development, when you think of yourself, um, you know, way back when you were in school, your self-esteem was low. You're, you lived in poverty, really. Um, you were then you then you sort of turned into this party girl and you got yourself out of that when you look at yourself now you look in the mirror you look at yourself the way you are the way you feel what is that like what's that personal development like in that journey and and do you credit lifestyles and 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 the whole opportunity with that yeah I give all the credit to lifestyles of Paul of my personality growth because um, where I grow up and my, my I had different environment and because of these uh, trainings that's why I told my business partners um, never miss any trainings because me I never miss trainings I, I am a totally different person now and I'm so proud of myself looking at the mirror this is totally 100% totally different and I, I, I give all the credit to lifestyles because Without lifestyles, I don't know where I'm at now. I don't know, but sure, it's not good. No, no. And I'm now I'm in a happy place. I'm in a happy place. Totally different. I'm in, I'm, I'm inspiring people now. I'm, I'm doing the mission. I love my mission, and I will keep uh, doing this mission for as long as I live. Well, that's fabulous. That's amazing. And you said something there about inspiring other people, um, and you know that's what it's really about now, right? It's like you have your mentors but for a lot of your group you're their mentor right and you're you're showing the way and you're leading them so what advice would you give somebody susan today who's thinking about joining lifestyles maybe they're unsure they don't know if it's the right thing for them what advice would you give to that person today um my advice to those people who's watching right now or maybe thinking of joining yes please Please be one of us, you guys, join now. This is a blessing, a true blessing. You know, maybe this is God's way of answering your prayers, just like me. You know, maybe maging healthy ka or more income, why not? No, if you have more, you can give more. And don't lose hope. Don't lose hope because your past is not equal to your future. For me, I thank God I met lifestyles. Because for me, it doesn't matter who's your husband, who's your parents, who's your brothers. No, at the end of the day, especially us women, no, we we must be or we should be financially independent. Ang sarap ng feeling if you have the freedom, and lifestyles will bring that freedom to you. Be a lifestyler now, dreamer ka lang. You're willing to work and just be teachable and learn the system. Like me, in three to five years' time, you will be thanking yourself for making the bravest decision of your life, and your life will never be the same, just like me. And you can be like us, like me. No, let's build our assets and, and be free and keep doing the mission, helping more and more and more people live better every day. Yes, ang saya dito. This is, uh, it's fun here at Lifestyles. Lifestyles is the best. So. Join now. <laughs> well, that's be one of us. <laughs> that's great advice, Susan. Thank you. Very, very motivating. Great advice. I just want to congratulate you on all your success. You deserve every bit of it. Um, you're you're a great person. Really nice Thank to talk you. to you. Um, thanks for spending time with us. Likewise. Thanks for spending time with us, and I look forward to seeing you soon in the Philippines. 
Thank you, Sir Paul. I'm looking forward as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lifestyles. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lifestyles. I love you. Thank you, thank you Sir Paul. Bye, Susan. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, there, there she is. Uh, Global Marketing Director Susan from Cebu City. What a great story. Amazing person. Great advice for everybody. Get involved today if you're wondering about it. We're here to support you. We've got great training. We've got great products great mentors. We're, we're looking forward to everybody joining and helping us to spread this mission right across the Philippines and across the world. So until next time, from the Leader Chat Room at Lifestyles Home Office in Toronto, Canada, thank you everybody and good morning.